and which led to CR to two weeks. I will try today to fix and um, at least present this in more organized way, the stuff I was talking about last time. So I hope that all the questions will be answered. Last time, there was a lot of discussion about this. So let me remind you of what we were discussing at the time. I defined this very cheap, and there were questions why this is natural. So this is the first thing I want to discuss. So I'm considering this U naught is tensor product over C arguments. So this is a structure sheet of our flag variety tensor over C sheet. And I want to turn this in an associative algebra, but to give some motivation, I will discuss this construction a little bit. Uh, in more detail. So first of all, let me remind you that if G is our, uh, say, connected algebra group with the Lie algebra G, which is complex semi-simple Lie algebra, then uh, G acts on flag variety, and uh, we can differentiate this action on G and this gives us a uh, homomorphism of the Lie algebra of G into tangent vector field, uh, the global, so global vector fields on X. So this is the global so then, of course, uh, <clears throat> if we look at this, this is a uh, morphism of the algebras. And we can extend this to the morphism U of G into global differential operators on X. Try to also do it by top. Then I can at least define this as an OX module, and I can extend tau to the morphism of OX modules U naught into the FX. So now we have the following claim, which I didn't discuss last time, I just stated it, and I think this caused uh, most of the discussion, that this U naught is um, a, a sheet of associated algebras on X, by multiplication, which is uniquely defined by this formula. So if I have f, which is regular function on x, c is in the Lie algebra of g, and I multiply it so g times theta, this is equal to F times G tensor or C theta plus F theta of C and G tensor with theta. 
So what is the motivation for this? If you look at this map and that you can easily see that if you map it here, that this becomes an, an, an identity using just calculation and vector fields. So we want to define by this formula a multiplication here such that this is an isomorphism of she's of associative objects. So I mean, checking this, uh, of course, this multiplication is uniquely de uh, uh, determined by this condition because uh, elements of the Lie algebra generate the envelope. So, so there is, if there is multiplication in this property, it's unique. This is critical. So the part which I skipped last time is how to uh, check this. So let me remind you that it's Anytime I have an OX module in this view now, I can define the sheet of uh, differential endomorphism. Oh, so, these uh, linear maps such that the commutator, this iterated commutators with a bunch of regular functions are zero for sufficiently large n, and then we say that the order of this differential endomorphism is less than or equal to n, if this holds for any n plus one two functions. And uh, the, well, it is easy to check that this is a filter uh, Sheet of algebra. This is straightforward calculation. And now I <clears throat> definitely OX sits inside this is differential operator and the momentum of order zero. But also the these guys, if I look at fields theme, is given G as theta as a tau C G tensor eta plus G as this is also, uh, I mean, if you calculate the commutator with the functions, so we see f, this is equal tau c applied to function f. So we see that p of c is a differential of the morph is in uh, order less than equal to one. And uh, combining these two facts, we see that uh, 
multiplication by this guy is a differential anamorphism or also order of some important one. Another simple exercise is to, to uh, one can show that uh, V of C, V of eta is V of the commutator C. Therefore, C extends to homomorphism of the analoging algebra of G into the global sections of the sheaf of differential and the morphisms of our G. And of course, then we can extend it by OX linearity and we get a map from U naught into this. So now the point is that this is injective and this follows immediately from the observation that F tensor uh, is C applied to one element one one is at tensor C. So this proves injectivity. Second observation is that this is um, the image is of you now is definitely closed on the left multiplication by the structure sheet by very definition and by right multiplication by elements of the analog algebra again by very definition. So if we prove that the image is caused on the left multiplication by elements of enveloping algebra, then we see that this is actually subalgebra in this. And the formula for multiplication definitely satisfies this property and this proves that you know it is an associative algebra. So this is this is the, the details of the stuff I people outside. And uh, so let's see. And uh, I mean the the fact I just said follows from this that if I to check that it's close and the left multiplication, so this is just this C, I put F equals to one, and then the statement becomes obvious from this uh, uh, formula. That, uh, and so this proves that U naught is the sheep of a source of divine. So this is in, in a way, uh, and, and of course, if you look at this for a moment, you see that there, uh, the map from U naught into differential operators given by tau is a morphism of piece of facilitating algebras. Well, the first line of the thing is not. Well, the plane is a piece of the algebra. 
uh, yeah, I, I just proved the claim. Then, then you know that that you not is a sheaf of associative algebra with multiplication satisfying this formula. Then, uh, from this, you can check immediately that this map tau is actually a morphism of sheaf of algebra just by following the definitions, because you get tau's here and this. Does this answer your question or is it? Uh, it it's it, all three columns are here. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, now, the, I, I won't observe, since this is an associative, uh, a sheet of associative algebra, I can also look at G0, which is all X, tensor with G over C, which sits inside this U0. And uh, again, if I look at two elements from here, so now I'm assuming that C and G, then, and let's look at the brackets. So this associative algebra. So this is F times G minus G Then if you calculate this, so what, what do we get? We get first F tau C on G, so eta. Then from the second piece, I get G tau eta F tensor C. And finally, I have this C eta and eta C here. So this gives me plus F G tensor with a commutator of C and eta. So we see that the commutator is in G naught. So G naught is a sheet of the algebra. And how, of course, because Stahl preserves the structure as a, a associative algebra. So in this case, we conclude the tau from G naught into the sheaf of tangent vector fields, considered as a sheaf of Lie algebras, is morphism. On these reactions. Great. So now, so we are at this point where we have a lot of discussion last time. Since, since this is a sheep of uh, on the bottom, it's a sheet of any algebra. The kernel of tau is the sheet of ideals in G naught, and of course, 
if you think about this for the moment, this is this sheaf B naught, which was the sheaf of sections of this vector bundle B, which can let me remind you. So we have uh, over X, we have a trivial bundle of the fiber X, and then we look at the sub bundle at the point X, we have the corresponding Borel B of X, Borel subalgebra B of X. So there was a lot of discussion about this. Does this make sense now? Okay, so so this is our first step. Now there is another observation. Of course, if you look at this commutator, this commutator is not OX linear because there are, I mean, these functions are get differentiated except in one special case, and this is important. So let me just discuss this in detail. If we take a section S of B naught. So I can write it as some F I and so C I. Then let me calculate the S commutator with say F tensor eta. So this is just the sum F I tensor C I F tensor eta. And then I can pull the sum out. And uh, what do I get? I have F I tau C I applied to uh, function F. And certainly eta and plus uh, sum, oh, okay, let me leave the sum together. So I will have F at I commutator C I. Now, the point is that if you think about this, this is tau of the sum F I C I. And sorry, but this is in V naught. So when I apply tau, I get to the zero vector because the, the value of the vector field is always in the Borel. Of the, the value of this thing at any point is corresponding Borel, so it goes to zero. So this is a, a, a zero vector field. So this piece vanishes. And uh, this thing, I can pull the set of files and I get And then if you think about the calculation 
um, we just did, I can put here f equals one, and then I see that this is just f uh, of times the commutator of s with, uh, with one tensor eta. So this tells me that odd, odd s is OX linear. If, if the S section of the Green. So now, if you think about this, now we define N naught as <laughs> Sections of N here before, which is the same as B, but we take a uh, point that uh, point X, I take N of X, where N of X is the commutator of Px, Px, both in practical on L. And then what happens that because of this OX linearity, we can put OX out for sections of N naught. This is what one observation. The other observation is that <clears throat> N naught is clearly G homogeneous. So if we look at natural action of G on N naught, so if we differentiate this N naught sections of N naught commute with the multiplication with the elements of the Lie algebra, and these two facts prove that N naught is a sheaf of ideals in G naught also. Okay, so now before uh, I erase this, let me write down two formulas. If you think about this for a moment, you see that do not tensor a uh, quotient by N not U not. Uh, let me first look at B here. B is sheet of ideals in the Lie algebra. So this is B naught U naught is a two sided ideal in uh, in U naught. So this is sheet of um, associative algebras on the flat variety. And uh, if you think about this, this is isomorphic with the X because we kill elements which give uh, zero differential operators effects on X. But we want to get parametrization of our twisted sheaves. So, and this is just one of the twisted sheaves we want to consider. So what we do, is that we take u naught and instead of v naught, it's portion of n naught v naught. And this is again a sheaf of um, associative algebra on x, which we denote by the h. So these uh, two definitions, I mean, 
to, to formulas. And uh, so Tasman had this question, why do you call this EH? And I, I will discuss this next. But let me point out that this DH is a group of algebras which appeared in Carrie Malone and Stalk at uh, this the conference. Uh, Two weeks ago, and uh, he constructed this in a very similar fashion, but basically he looked at differential operators on G mod n, which are invariant under the H action, where this is the action of abstract Cartan subgroup from. The right, and these were and the section is going to be invariant differential operators, and we pushed this field from G mod N to G mod B. But this is the same construction but done in slightly different way. Any questions? Yes. Uh, I think this is basic. It will become clear for something I will discuss. But basically, if you think about this, uh, it is. Uh, let me go one step forward because I think then, then that the both your question and Tasman's question will be uh, clear. And by this. So, okay, let me first remind you that we not divided by M not appeared in our discussion on Borel Vail, and we argued that this is uh, a sheet of sections of a, of a, on this trivial vector bundle over flag gravity. And uh, the ga gamma of, of this, so the, basically the constant section, so of this vector bundle was our abstract Cartan subalgebra, uh, algebra H. And this is the same H. This H. Great. So now let me say what we can. So H maps into our D of H. And H, since the commutators in B naught are in N naught, so the conclusion is that these elements of H commute, and therefore we can extend this to the enveloping algebra H. This this map. Yes, because you see in P of H we quotient out with this. And this, this, so this gives you a map of the portion of this into the page. It's a constant section, so it doesn't make too much uh, difference. 
yes, in global sections, but you can always restrict them. So this is the first remark. The second remark is if you look at the construction, the the group G, I erase the definition, acts on all of X, acts on the enveloping algebra with adjoint action, acts on this ideal, and uh, the action on this, the action on, uh, on global sections of this, we remark is trivial because of conjugation theorems. So this tells us that H and also the image of U of H are in G invariants of all sections. So this is another statement that say gamma X the H uh, G variants contains U of H. And we are going to prove that action equality. And this is, I hope, the answer to Tasman's question why this H is there, because U of H is the center of this. Okay, I this guarantees I, I should be more careful. This property guarantees that U of H commutes with the elements of, of Lie algebra by differentiation, but I it also it commutes with uh, all X because of this remark here, because elements of H come from the Borel. So, so these are two, two pieces of uh, information we have to use to check this. Okay, so now we can try to figure out how this uh, D of H looks like locally, and I hope this will uh, answer Anna's question. So if we lo look at, uh, say, fix a point in flag variety, and look at the, so this is some n of x and let n bar be an opposite, uh, an opposite n for the morale, so complementary thing. So then I can look at E of H, a restricted to U. Then this is O, U tensor, but U and bar tensor U of H. If you think about this, so what do you do? You take a point here and uh, you look at my current array where you go with and uh, <clears throat> so you are quotient by this U of F and not. So you can take N of some point y move it around by the group n bar and you, you get um oh, 
actually let, let me see. No, I fixed my bar. I'm moving this guy by n bar, and uh, I get uh, these n of x's, and they. Oh, let's see. Oh. I mean, what, what they claim that locally, this looks like this, because at any point, let me say what, why I have the composition n bar uh, plus some carton C into in B of X, uh, B of Y. I'm on open cell. Uh, plus uh, n of y. I can take Poincaré variable of it. This gives me the the composition of enveloping algebra and uh, c and n y is the Borel. At the point y in this, when we quotient with n y, then we get this piece, and uh, this uh, this comes from the cell, and then we have some coefficients. So this is basically how d of h looks locally. I mean, one has to do some work to check. The details, but this is essential for imperative of width. And uh, this is again shows how this U of H entered the game. And from this formula, you see that D of H is. is locally. U of H free. Now we just have to finish this business with the standard. So yeah, can you take the Mattel standard? Uh yeah, yeah, corresponding to N of X. Yes. Yes. The point is that on that open cell, the opposite is no quadratical x freely. Yes, right. yes, exactly. This is this is why we get this unique decomposition, and this is what we can write uh, sections using this, and then then we can understand what happens to the quotient. Yeah, and achieve there becomes trivial on this. Yeah, 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 exactly. Does it often just mean from uh, You switch the the ordering on the roots, but of course, depending on the choice of Cartan in your Borel, you get different opposites. So it's not the opposite is not canonical. It's it depends on the choice of Cartan. So this is why I had trouble with Arctic. As they usually have, since Croatian has no argument. Okay, so I mean, this is Chris. This is related. When we were discussing cohomology, this is one fact I forgot to mention to you because this this implies that one of the exact sequences I was writing is actually exact because of. Which freeze. We are going to get to this in a moment. Okay, so then now, now we can get one step further. We can claim that U of H is equal. Okay, so this is now we are going to remove this question. So 
let's consider a G invariant se uh, section of, of this uh, D of H whole section. Then its value at point X has to be stable under the action of corresponding Borel, B of X. So that so if S is G a G invariant. S X is B of X invariant. So this is the value in, in geometric fiber, and geometric fiber by construction is U of G modulo N of X U of G. This follows from this definition. So this means that if you look, so B, the Lie algebra of this acts here, and this means that S of X has to be of weight zero with respect. to uh, the Cartan C sitting, say, in the effects. Fix the Cartan. Now, this means that, if, again, if you look at the weights zero in this, this means that there is uh, the, the value in S, S of X is in U of C for this particular part on because we are pushing out N of X we could again we use Poincaré Birkhoff with its of weight zero if there are no elements of n of x on one side, you cannot have elements of n bar, say, uh, on the other side, the same argument as in the case of Hirschenberg morphism. So s of x is in U of c. Therefore, s of x is also, since c specialization of h, s of x is equal to T of X for some T in U of H. Or if you want S minus T at X is equal to zero. But now S is by our certain something is G invariant, and T is G invariant, but what we proved before, so both of them are G invariant, and there's zero at one point, so there's zero everywhere. So the conclusion is that S is equal to T. And this tells us that they actually we have an important. So we, we know what uh, the G invariants in this global sections of the page. Now we can construct our diagram. So we have, first of all, UOG canonically maps in global sections of the page. This is what we uh, and at the beginning of the construction, here we have 
D or G, the center of the enveloping algebra mass into this. So the composition goes into the X of H. On the other hand, we have Harishchandra homomorphism, which goes in U of H. And remember, our Harishchandra homomorphism was defined with respect to this. So if I go U of H, I variance here, and we see that this diagram is the uh, commutes. So this is thing we can know by gamma. Without. I mean, shift is just built in to get the symmetry. And this is, we are before the symmetry. We just need some formal level. But so this implies I have two maps and they agree D of G. So this implies that we have a canonical map of U of G and serve the Z of G the or Z of G with U of H this maps into gamma X U of H. And now we can state the theorem. So the first statement is that uh, global sections of V of H are equal to what we just suggested to the tensor product of U of G with U of G. Of G. And the second statement is the higher cohomologies of these sheets. So this is the first part of the story. Now we have to prove this and then once we uh, prove this, then just there is a simple argument which gives us global sections. So we love them. Okay. So I think it's time for a break now. Unfortunately, all of the details I listed will be needed in this final proof. But once you prove the the results you can forget the proofs. I mean, we want to prove that this twisted sheet, uh, first of all, we want to give the construction of the twisted sheet of Bailingson and Bernstein, which is basically that we specify a linear form on the carton and we tensor over U of H with the corresponding homomorphism. So if lambda is a weight, this is the sheaf of differential operators on a line line. But it makes perfect sense in general. And this is this the sheet, uh, family of the sheets of different operators of black variety, which appear in, in some very kind of villains of categories. And uh, so, so, so basically, uh, when we have these sheets, we can, uh, we don't, I mean, we, we prove the equivalence of categories assuming as a black box the theorem about the homology of these elements and their global sections. This was critical. But now I'm proving uh, that this formula is correct.
In a way, if you take the, the gluten cost condition for differential operators are uh, weaker than gluten condition for antibodies. So there are more of these Swiss Swiss cheese, the parameter vectors, and in this case, it's span by a lattice of plates for each one. So this is kind of the heuristics behind that. And what I'm doing is giving construction of these uh, twisted sheaves and also calculating their functions. <coughs> this is critical for, for the food for the technology of happiness. Thank you. Are you speaking in the next week? Uh, I think so, yes. So next week I will discuss anyway, the localization. Part. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so now we have to calculate this cohomology. And if you ever use Lie algebra, homology or cohomology, or just causal complexes, this proof uh, uh, will be transpiring. If you didn't look at this, then I'm sorry. I mean, this is something you can check just in private if you're office. If I would do this in the class you can because there are various horrendous formulas you have to check. The okay, I shouldn't uh, so I'm I will just give a sketch of the proof and we can discuss if there are some issues. So first step is to write down something which is simplified standard resolution paper the algebra homology. So we look at the And I was using so we define this as a portion of U naught by N naught U naught. So it's natural to write resolution, which is U naught. A uh, tensor or OX with the wedge in negative degrees of N naught. So the term for N, so if I look at N uh, zero term in this complex and the first. Then I get this. And uh, by our definition, this is exact. So the trouble with, is with the rest of this complex. So I will give you the formula for the differential. So D of U, again, if you ever looked at standard complex of Lie algebra, homology and cohomology, you will see that this is just the copy of this. So I look at tensor product of U with this K to edge, and this is equal to some i goes from one to k minus 
1 to i plus 1 u vi tensor at v1 veg veg vi veg veg vk and we skip vi and this cat means that this turns out this is the first piece of differential and uh, the second piece is plus one less than i less than equal to j less than equal to k minus one i plus j u tensor with vi commutator with vj veg uh, v one veg veg vi kicked out veg vj out vk so this is the formula for differential i mean and there are different ways to check the dd square is zero okay so uh, this thing this is just a complex in uh, negative degrees between zero and uh, dimension of negative dimension of n. So the, so the indices are negative. So this is just a, a left resolution of the image. I will not hope that very much to the first thing you did there. Oh, you, 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 I'm sorry, this is my, then, uh, yes, thanks. I, I just. So, this is one. I think if you really want to suffer with this in a seminar, so closely, there are Cartier's. Uh, articles on the Lee algebra for homology, where he checks this with a bunch of tricks, and each step in the trick it makes sense. I mean, brutal calculation is possible, but it would drive you crazy. Fix all the signs. The other thing is one you that once you establish this that this is a complex, then I think that the easy way is to filter the complex and in the right way, and it's explained in my notes, and by filtering it and going to Brady complex to get rid of this term, which is nasty. And this is just the standard Fazul resolution, and then either you prove it or you believe it. So, so it's a tedious, tedious calculation. Everything is done in this paper, so uh, Cartier, but I definitely don't want to do this in class because this would be a lot of pain and suffering and probably a lot of errors. Okay, but you check that this is uh, a resolution. So that this is exact. Now I need some other remarks that here, first of all, and the differential behaves well with respect to this, the group G and on the modules. First of all, the group G acts on D of H or let's say normal section one. It acts on U naught and it acts on 
values of n naught because n naught is g invariant, and uh, so so this is the g action, and there are two actions of the uh, Lie algebra of G. One is by multiplying uh, the first term in the resolution by C in the first term and uh, the second action is by right multiplication by minus C in the first term and adjoint action on the ledge. So you get the action of G cross G. So this is actually, we are going to discuss that next time. This is like a complex of GK modules for complex G, which has a, has a real the algebra, which is product of two copies, the algebra of G. And, but the point is that the differential of this action just correspond to the diagonal action of this. So this follows just if you look at the formula, because when you differentiate the G action, you get adjoint action on the analogic algebra. And this means you first apply psi from the left, and then you apply minus psi from the right. And then G acts also by adjoint action on the wedge. And when you differentiate this, you get uh, this piece. Okay, so. Now, now the more interesting stuff. Shows up. So we have to check what what is cohomology of these guys. So HP of U naught uh, oh okay X of U naught tensor uh, by say wedge minus Q. Uh, and not. Okay. I mean, I, okay, I can write this down. So then we are going to apply the other situation. First of all, this is over OX, and this is OX, the OX tensor the U of G. So I can rewrite this as U of G answer over C with the cute wedge. So this tells me uh, HP um, 
and this is like that. Uh, or x u wedge of n not, not tensor over c to u of g. To be less than u but maybe over half of it here. Down So the critical piece of information is this piece over here. And this is this is given by this lemma of ball. So so you mentioned what the result is. Okay. This is also period because yeah yeah okay so so Chris explain what this thing is and this is zero if P and Q are different and it is equal if not it's not zero if P is equal to Q and in this case, it's a trivial representation of G uh, with multiplicities, cardinality of W G, uh, P. So if I look at wild group, I can look at the elements of length P. So you write an element in the Weyl group is a product of simple reflection. The shortest word which represents the element is the length of this element. So I take all Weyl group elements of the length p and I take the cardinality and this trivial module with that multiplicity is. Um, exactly this uh, cohomology of this vector bundle. So as an exercise, I would suggest to that try to prove uh, this using only Borel veil law. This follows from Borel veil law. So this is why I wanted to use Borel veil law. And I mean, th this has interest in the in the sense that we prove, or Chris proved, not me, or railway bonds essentially using uh, rail mail and uh, using this wall crossing technique. So basically, Morel veil was proved using stairs results on the cohomology of coherent sheaves. So this fact follows, as I said, also from Morel veil bot using the standard arguments. And I suggest that take this as a Hard exercise. Basically, these are homogeneous vector bundles on X. You can see. So, what is a geometric fiber? Geometric fiber is fed of N of X. So, in degree P, if I take root vectors, then this say p wedge is always has a basis uh, consisting of external products of the root vectors of of length p, which correspond to p different roots. 
So basically, the basis is parametrized by subset of the positive roots of uh, size p. And uh, if you look at these weights and take, there exists, of course, filtration, the standard reproduced many times, such that the corresponding grading object is um, direct sum of line bundles. And these line bundles correspond to these weights. So, so the question is, what are the cohomologies of these line bundles? And this is given by Morel Nail one. But you have to see what the, the <clears throat> structure of the weights is. And there, there is a trick which is very useful. And the trick is, so I will give you this hint and then think about this because this, in a lot of calculations, it, this is, this is uh, again, uh, Cartier's trick, which you can find, say, in the appendix to Costant paper on uh, generalized Borel Vale log. So you have a sum of positive roots. So you subtract the row. So then what you get is a linear combination of all the roots with the coefficients one half or minus one half. And all of them appear. So you have to figure out what is the structure of this linear combination of roots. So to take all roots and uh, pick finitely many of them with plus one as a coefficient, a plus one half, and we have a with minus one. This is clearly invariant on the under violin. So to see the structure of this set of uh, weights, you just have to figure out uh, how uh, they look. And uh, since they are one group invariant, you can say, look at them in the same positive chamber. And you will see that they are either in the wall or the only regular one is, there is only one which is regular. And of course, if you, you look at Borel Vale bot, if you have a weight in the, in the wall and look at this row shift, the cohomology of the corresponding line bundle disappears. So you will just have a vial group orbit of possible line bundles. And when you, the action is always trivial on the corresponding cohomology. So basically you get this statement, you just have to count them. And when you count them, you see that you get this. So this is a good exercise and tricks with wild groups. And there are a lot of places where this trick is used. So this is one exercise. I mean, this one is quite difficult. I gave you four chapters. Anyway, what did we prove? I'm using this result. If you look at this resolution, then pieces in the resolution on the place, say, uh, minus P, it has the cohomology in degree P. So, kind of moves at the zero level. So you, if you look at spectral sequence for this complex to calculate its cohomology, you see that uh, cohomology will appear only in degree zero. I mean, if you want, 
you can interpret this also um, yeah no I mean this is this is what you need to do so basically this spectral steepens the generate and uh, you get that cohomology of D of H can appear only in degree zero. And uh, so you get the vanishing result immediately. So then you have to figure out what is going on in degree zero. In degree zero, of course, the result is that there exists a finite filtration of the global sections such that the corresponding graded objects are copies of U of G tensor over C for the space of this dimension. So basically, the graded object is a direct sum of order of W copies of U of G. If you take the gene variance of this, then remember you get U of H. Uh, the invariance of global sections of this. Invariance of this thing are just a center. And uh, so the conclusion is that invariance of D of H are U of H, and this is also a free module of rank order of W over the center, which is a res result of, I think, Steinberg about invariance of Weil group, which follows just from this computation. And then you use the fact that uh, <clears throat> the G Accessibly. So if I look at invariance of graded modules, then exactly corresponds to graded version of invariance of the whole thing. So this tells you that filtration induced on U of H gives you pieces, copies of the center over here. And uh, then, if you look at this just by linear algebra, you conclude that the, the map from U of G tensor Z of G uh, U of H into global sections of D of H is an isomorphism and this completes the proof. Okay, so this is the proof of the, the result for the page. Any any questions? So now let me uh, add this the second theorem, the one we actually are uh, mostly interested in. So we define V lambda, uh, which is the H tensor over U of H, C lambda plus rho. So here, the rho shift enters the game. This is, if you look at our local expression for D of H restricted open Bruja cell, when we tensor 
to the H, we just get the ordinary differential operator. So this is this degree. Operators and clearly there is a since <clears throat> there is a natural map from U of G in that. And then the theorem is that <clears throat> mobile sections of the lambda. A U of theta, where U of theta is the portion of U of G by the maximal ideal corresponding to theta, but now in this situation, relative is built in. So it's exactly what we want. And the second statement is that higher cohomologies. The lambda vanish. This is what you did actually want. So the proof of this is now straightforward. It's not to take a free resolution of this. Uh, in London for a plus one. So, yeah. And then first we tensor this over U of H. with D of H. And remember, D of H is locally UH free. So this thing stays exact. So we have um, D of H and circle U of H. So this is the left resolution of the lambda. Observe that these are three modules. So these guys are some of copies of D of H. D of H is a sibling for gamma. So this is a resolution of D of H by a cyclic modules. So you can calculate the cohomology of the lambda by looking at this resolution. But the resolution goes to the wrong side, so this means that it's cohomology is zero. So this proves to and if you we want to prove one, so let's take gamma here. So you get gamma x v h tensor u h is f minus one and gamma x v h tensor h with f. Zero goes to gamma x d lambda. And we have to figure out what's going on here at the end. And uh, so this is, uh, we got to erase this. So this is U of 
G tensor over C of G tensor over U of H tensor over U of H so, so these guys cancel out and we get so this is zero G zero G and so that one here we have the same thing for a zero so let me just write the final result but these f's now, since there are three resolutions of the U of H modules, and remember that U of H modules uh, uh, three Z of G modules, this is what we just proved. So this is a, I mean, this, yeah, I mean, this, this stays exact. And what we get here is U of G tensor with Z of G uh, C lambda plus rho. So basically, I can take this first resolution and tensor it with this, and I get this, and uh, because these things are isomorphism, these two guys are isomorphic, and this is the first state. So this is the proof, this result to be assumed earlier. Okay, okay, great, thank you.